Okay, I just wanted to talk about um, some tactics that elite men use to trap you and cage you. And you have to watch out for them. I and mean, I can give you some examples and um, even personal experiences of what happened to me. I remember um, once I met this guy and you know he had a little money and he knew I was poor and I didn't have a lot of money and I didn't have a good job and so he would um, take me out and try to you know fatten me up or whatever so I wouldn't couldn't meet anyone else or no other guy would want me and so he could basically lower my self-esteem and he would um, let me get like kind of big and then he would you know fat me up because I remember like he picked me up and then I'd eat like McDonald's and then I would eat pizza and all this stuff and I'd have like three four big meals a day right and he was bringing me chocolate and all kinds of you know fattening food and I know what he was trying to do so you know I got you know pretty big and then he would say like call me fat and stuff and lower my self esteem where I just didn't want to date anyone anymore or you know try to meet anyone else because then I was just stuck with him because I was too fat and see they do that you gotta really watch out and um I remember, like, when I was trying, when I still kind of looked nice, I was trying to, you know, go places or do things, and he would be like, um, he didn't want me to go or whatever, and he would park his car, like, there'd be three cars, like, like, like right now I'm sitting at this thing, and we'd be parking in the parking lot. Well, he would come and put his car in right behind mine. And I couldn't back out. And so I'd look out the window and I'd be, you know, ready to go. I'd be walking out the door or something. And all of a sudden, my car would be blocked in. And I would just have this feeling of this, like, no control. And, I mean, I couldn't leave. And I didn't have no choice about it. And it was horrible. And that's when I started realizing that men are really, really something else. Because they will, like, prevent you from going somewhere. They will trap you to stay with them. And um, I would have to, like, do what he would want so that I could just leave. And um, a lot of times you just don't want to, you know, call the police. You don't want to, you know, deal with all of that drama. Oh, shoot. So, and it was something else, let me tell you. I did not like it at all. And I knew, you know, I had to get away from him. And so I started realizing that men want to keep you trapped. They want to keep you down. They want you not to have fun or not to um, be independent a lot of times. And I remember, you know, talk, when I would tell men, yeah, I, I want to start my own business and, you know, I just want to do this, I want to do that. And, you know, and I would have, you know, good ideas and plans and, and I'd tell them and ask for, you know, help or input or support and they would just shoot me down and just laugh at me and just like, be like, you can't do that and you're never going to do this. And, and um, I would be like, man, I just wish I could have meet a guy that was supportive who would just, like, be behind me. And I, I know I could do so much. Maybe, you know, if I just had some love, you know. And it's like they just, you know, would laugh, almost get, like, a kick out of me almost not succeeding. And I remember one time I was starting this business... And I, it was my dating service, right? And it was the one before it was going to be the elite one. And we're, you know, not the elite one, but the anti-elite. And, 
well, it's for, you know, uh, Christ, Christian elites who don't want to date, anti, you know, elite, so you're anti. But, um, at the time, I was just going to be like, you know, the matchmaking millionaire lady or whatever, where I was just going to give, you know, help these women meet the richest guy they could meet or whatever. You know, what was going to happen to them. I didn't even follow up or care. I was just, here's a hookup, you know. And... I was working at City University at the time, and I had the contacts, and I was meeting a lot of people, and um, all of a sudden, I had rented out Seward Park, because I guess you could like rent the section or whatever, and you know, let's see what side of the stage is on. And, um, So, so I rented out the park and I had, you know, made flyers and invited people and a whole bunch of people were coming and I had met um, a couple people and a couple guys I kind of liked and I, you know, I had this thing going on it was going to be off the chain and all of a sudden, um, I think my boyfriend must have found out about it because he picked me up and we got in a bad car accident. And I, you know, still to this day can't tell you what happened. And the car just broke down. He claimed it ran out of gas. I don't know, but, um, I, you know, there went my business. And I couldn't even regroup for so long. I, it was hard to walk. And I, um, couldn't work for a while. I was, I was on disability and... It took me a very long time to recover from that, much less even get a business started. So, I mean, I just have so many stories I can tell you.